Hi, everybody. Um, this has been a couple years in the making, and in a way, we could call this Outreach TV because I'm an outreach case manager when I'm back in L.A. doing my thing, and people call Steve here the godfather of outreach. So, um, but uh, he uh, has his own blog. I do, Stone Soup Station. And he blogs on change.org, and, you know, I've been trying to, I've been chasing him down for a couple of years, and we finally met today. Yeah. What uh, a pleasure, too, by yeah, the way. Um, briefly, tell me, tell me a little bit about your history and, you know, how, let's set this thing up. Well, here's the deal for me. Um, we were talking about this earlier. I am a consumer provider. Uh, that is uh, the sort of agency speak for uh, being someone who spent most of his life uh, out there on the streets. I was addicted to heroin, cocaine for most of my adult life, you know, heavy drug user, bipolar disorder, all the things that uh, a lot of times send people spiraling into homelessness. You know, and I was really no different. Um, the, the big, I guess the big change for me really was that uh, it was probably, well, it was 1998, uh, and I was just really, really tired of being broke, uh, in poverty, uh, strung out on heroin. I just had had it. Right. And um, at, right at the point where I, I didn't even care anymore to live, as a matter of fact, I had overdosed for the third time and had uh, awakened in the back of an ambulance and was really upset with the paramedic who said, you know, who had brought me back. And I was not really, uh, I was just really upset that he just didn't leave me alone. You know, I right. could care less if I would have lived or died. And at that point, I met a woman who, and it's, you know, usually one of those stories, and I hate to sound cliche, but behind every great man, there's a greater woman. Right. And this one happened to come into my life at the right time. And I have still to this day, and we're still together. I don't know why she took a chance on me. Right. Uh, I'm really grateful she did. And one of the things that she did was to say to me, I don't care if uh, you, you want your drugs, you can have them. If you want me, you can have me, but you can't have both. And I, I, I walked away from that the weekend. The power of the woman. Absolutely. And uh, I tried kicking heroin, and I actually was successful for a short time. Uh, but it was such a difficult, I've been using opiates for a long time, Mark, and um, uh, by the, by the, seventh or eighth month, uh, the, the, the illness and the craving was so much that I entered a methadone maintenance treatment program. And uh, I have been clean now 12 years on a methadone maintenance program. Uh, April 21st of 2010 was my 12th year. And in that 12 years, I have uh, finished high school, gotten my bachelor's degree in sociology, got a master's degree in public administration, started to do outreach in 2000, late 2000, no, excuse me, early 2005 here in Nashville. And it has been the moment I hit the streets here, I knew that that's what I was supposed to do. And I have been doing that ever since. Um, Steve actually slapped my paradigm about methadone maintenance. And as you guys know, I was a drug addict for 25 years. And you know, you're, you're, you know, when you, when you shop at Kmart, you know what Walmart has. So, Absolutely. you know, uh, I, you know, know of the met known methadone maintenance, but I've never met anybody that is currently on methadone maintenance, but surviving and not just surviving, surviving well and helping other people. Absolutely. So that brings us up today. And, and, and I, I'm for the topic of this conversation, because your expertise that you teach on outreach. I do. Uh, uh, let's talk about, because you teach on outreach around the country. I do. What What is different about different areas of the country? Um, what are some things that are common? And what are some basic outreach, you know, principles besides, you know? Uh, understood. Um, I think what's, what's really different uh, around the country um, are the levels of expertise and uh, um, really agency uh, engagement and interaction on right. outreach. Right. So no matter, I mean, you know, it doesn't really matter the size of the city. Uh, Nashville is a, like the 25th largest city in the country, uh, has um, in some pockets some outstanding uh, agency personnel and, and outstanding outreach. 
uh, other places, you, you wonder how, you know, how people have been getting by. And that's the same way that I found from, you know, across the board, city after city. Uh, there are really great workers, and then there are people who are just kind of trying to get their paycheck. Um, it's interesting you said that because <laughs> you would know, I, not that particular aspect, but you immediately went that the difference is, is in the homeless service providers, not in homelessness itself. It, and I was interviewed yesterday by somebody that was trying to say, okay, homelessness in L.A. and homelessness in Philadelphia is different because people are different. And I said, no, it's not. It's Why same. homelessness is so bad in L.A. is because L.A. bureaucracy is messed up. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's yes. the providers and what, the what, stupid, what is, yes. you, know, you know what I mean? What's, so, a, what's available and not available in, in each in each uh, locale for resources and how people are linked to those resources. Right. If you can get people to the resources, the people, as long as the resources are, uh, are beneficial uh, and not things that um, people are forced to jump jump hoops to get, uh, and then are basically substandard once they get them. Right. Um, you can find that just in daily life. Uh, but if you've got decent resources and people who are committed to delivering them, um, it, 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 just about anybody will will right. jump at that. Right. You know, and it, that's what, as you travel the country, like I've been to Anchorage, Alaska, of course. It's different than Florida because of the climate. Absolutely. But drug addiction is the same. Absolutely. Poverty is the same. Absolutely. So, you know, people are the same. Absolutely. So it's the homeless service yes. providers. So Absolutely. now, okay, you're an outreach worker. Engagement. Let's talk about walking into a tent city or walking down an alley or whatever the first engagement is. How do you engage hurting people on the streets? What do you teach? For, for uh, the, the, I think the most the most important thing that people need to remember is that um, we're not talking about those people. We're not talking about a, a different group of of beings. We're talking about humans, and we're talking about understanding the fact that uh, everybody has a story, and it, you're, what you're looking at when you see somebody who is experiencing homelessness is a, just a brief snapshot, and the only way you're ever going to make progress or actually engage is to, to, to start learning the story, and people want to share that, and part of the issue of homelessness is that Folks have been so maligned, so kicked to the curb, pushed to the side, that when somebody shows interest in hearing what they've got to say, uh, my God, that's, that's, that's like you know throwing open the doors and saying, come on and spend some time with me. That is the, probably the most important aspect of that initial engagement I can deliver is that um, you know, I, I, you, I am what you see. You're not going to get any BS. I'm not going to candy coat it. I'm never going to overpromise anything to you. Right, right. Uh, you know, um, I'm and, very uh, careful about absolutely. what I say because people on the streets have had so many broken promises, absolutely so many lies that I, I am, I, even if I'm <laughs> sure, and there's just a little bit of doubt, I'll say, Hey, I'm not going to promise you this, but we'll try. Absolutely. And I mean, it is over, you know. Uh, what is it? Uh, under promise and over deliver. You know, as much as possible. Um, the other part of that is, uh, you know, I, I think that homelessness is traumatic. Period, and you're you're dealing with folks who are undergoing sustained trauma response. So whenever you're dealing with people who who are really experiencing homelessness, you have to understand as an outreach provider, as a case manager, you've got to understand that. The, the things that you're asking of them, the, the, you know, the things that you need them to comply with, the, the documents that you're requesting, you are asking uh, somebody who, here's an example, if you're driving in a vehicle and you are just about to get in an accident and have to swerve dramatically out of the way, and right about that same time, I ask you, while you're steering the car, Mark, I need to see your birth certificate. What are you going to tell me? Can you give me a minute? Hold on a minute. Let me get my poop together. You have to realize that people are dealing constantly with this trauma. And, and what you see as noncompliance or, or uh, somebody who doesn't seem to be uh, really engaged with you, it's not because they're they're not engaged. It's they're because in they're yeah, absolutely, they're in crisis. and you just have to accept that and then work with it instead of trying to you know stumble. Extra grace it. required. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Now that let's let's flip the coin a little bit because as an outreach worker, here's my frustration. Okay. 
how does the outreach worker deal with the agency? Because <laughs> now, you know, that's yeah, the harder buddy. part. That's the because million we, dollar we, question. We, 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 we build these relationships with people on the streets. We want to get them out, but often there's no housing or there's Absolutely. just so much bureaucracy. Absolutely. Or the, like, you know, a conversation that just happened in here with one of your coworkers was one of those gaps in the safety net things. Absolutely. So how do you deal with that? You know, we face um, two sets of barriers. We face the barriers that our clients bring us. And um, we also face the barriers that are imposed on us by our own organizations and by our government and the bureaucracy that we got to deal with. Um, the To me, it's a lot like how I deal with my own recovery. You know, I take it one step at a time, one day at a time, one case at a time, one barrier at a time. And I, I have learned over the last really five years to pick my battles, there are some that I know I'm not going to be able to right. win. Um, the small victories are, are in essence, really, really big right. victories. Oh, and okay. um, it, it takes kind of a steady, plodding progression. Right. If you are into instant gratification like a lot of us old wow. dope addicts are, right. um, that can be damned right. frustrating. Right. But there is, uh, with some time and patience, you, you soon learn that... You know, it is those, those small victories that add up, right. you know? My first year, and I, I think, um, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, because you teach outreach, so you're probably going to slap me on this. <laughs> I doubt it. But. No, no, no. I, there's aspects of outreach that I don't think can be taught. I agree. And that's navigating the system pretty much. Because, and, and, and Natalie, if you're watching this, it's the truth. My first year... <laughs> As an outreach case manager, I was pretty much worthless. I didn't know who to call. I didn't know what agencies did what, who had money, who had gaps. You know, it happened. My second year, I was a little better because right. I'd made some relationships. I'd made the relationships on the streets. Understood. Those were easy for me. But the, you know, an outreach worker is only as good as his Rolodex. Uh, I agree. You um, know what I, I mean? do. And that's that's absolutely true. Time of it year. does. And the bummer about that is that because outreach is traditionally kind of low on the totem pole to pay, um, just about the point where outreach workers really get good and know their stuff, um, they're recognized uh, within agencies as being valuable and then taken out and given, you know, higher level jobs. Right. So you are constantly starting over with right. people, which is a huge frustration right. for folks on the street as well, as you right. know, because it's the flash in the pan that made a lot of, you know, right. where is that guy? He made all these commitments and now he's gone to a different job. That's no wonder people are cynical. Right. You know, uh, the, the big part of that, though, in my mind, Mark, is two things. One, people who do this work with any regularity and for any length of time come at it with a servant's heart. There's, you, yeah. you know. Right. Um, and those who don't have the servant's heart are gone pretty damn quick. Right. Um, the other part of that, I think, centers around really effective training. And really, um, that's kind of what where, where my career path and, and my experience has taken me is that it is making sure that I get uh, to train people around the country on ways that I know have been really successful. I cannot tell people how to do outreach. I can't tell them exactly uh, how to be successful, but I can put a huge toolbox in front of them and give them a lot of tools. Gotcha. You know? are, are any of those tools available online? Because let's say I can't bring you in to teach my staff. Understood. Where would, <coughs> I, look? Where would I look? The best place, uh, and, and we talked about this earlier, it's kind of a dry spot. I got gotcha. you. But we're, 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 we're really working to make it a little more fun and engaging. The Homelessness Resource Center. Uh, it, what it brings are webcasts. Uh, uh, policy uh, manuals, um, the, the uh, outreach to people uh, experiencing homelessness curriculum by Ken Cradle, outstanding, uh, Craig Rannenbaum, uh, just outstanding names in the field of outreach and, and engagement. Uh, uh, and this is the Center. godfather of outreach, <laughs> recommending other people. Oh, these guys are, yeah, these guys make me kind of look, you know, uh, like, a, like a neophyte, a newbie. Uh, but, but the Homelessness Resource Center, Google it, you can find it online. Uh, it, it is chock full of great things. And it not only is the, includes the Homelessness Resource Center, but also projects to assist with the transition out of homelessness and then services and supportive housing, which are all really interconnected, Mark. There, I mean, you can't have one without the other, really. Right. You know? The other big issue, and this is my only personal pet peeve, is that, you know, to me, the hardest job in homeless services is the receptionist. 
Absolutely. Because she's saying no more than she said yes. Absolutely. And the people on the front line, outreach receptionists, as you said, are usually your lower income. They are. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you're watching that, Natalie. But um, there's a huge amount of burnout because we're, we're, we have this, and, and, I, and I, I really feel that if you're a, a CEO or an executive director or you're that take care of your frontline people. Absolutely. Buy them a gym membership. That $34 a month is going to actually increase productivity. Uh, take them to Disney World, Disneyland. Do Self something care. because it's actually going to save you. Oh, I don't have the money in the budget. It's going to save you money and it's going to increase productivity. So what are your tips for the frontline workers, outreach receptionists, of keeping sanity? There is, uh, I am a really big proponent of self-care and we are, you know, we'll preach that to people all the time on the street. We'll preach it to each other, but, um, you know, we, we are so often so dedicated. I mean, I, you know, look at you traveling around the country, uh, you know, you can't tell me that you don't get tired. Um, and it, for me, it yeah, is, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I exhaust my point. Uh, but you, you know, there, there comes a point where, um, if the outreach worker, the paramedic, the nurse, if they're uh, not able to care for themselves and are not healthy, they're not going to be able to take care of anybody else. So there is a big issue of self-care. Uh, the agency I work at that I'm sitting in today, really big on making um, uh, days off available, uh, personal Julie time for yourself, uh, right available three. for you. Uh, same thing with the, the agency that uh, I'm, I'm actually headed to. Uh, another real big focus on self-care, and, and it's, it's absolutely essential. Well, any last words? Because uh, we're going to, he introduced me to uh, uh, somebody that's a homeless vet in his wheelchair. His motorhome was uh, towed. Even they came up while the guy was in it. Uh, just a Kicked horrible story. He only needs 300 bucks. So um, we're going to go get him out. Mark so, has been amazingly well, gracious. it's you guys. It's you guys that are that are making this happen. So. I guess I would say thank you to everybody that, that has supported Mark <laughs> in his journey. Uh, it's an amazing thing that he's doing, and, and you know, I'm, I'm glad he's here. La last words on outreach. On outreach? But, uh, uh, what would you I'll be stop letting you on the bow. I won't break my arm. No, no, no. What, what are the... Uh, I was just uh, trying to... Because we got to go and, and get this guy's uh, motorhome out of the impound. Um, I would, I think the most important thing is to remember that the outreach is the critical link between services and the folks on the street. You, you cannot get the horse to water without outreach. And it's up to the agency to make the horse drink, but by God, without outreach, we're never going to get the message out. Right. Um, if people wanted to get a hold of you, your blog or... Stone Soup Station, and you can reach me anytime. Uh, the uh, Homelessness Resource Center, you can find me there, change.org. You can gotcha. find me there. I'm, cool. I'm easily found. Cool. Hey, yeah, it took me two <laughs> well, years. Except unless you're hard. <laughs> Outreach workers don't get the voicemail on their phone yeah, because there's the so many messages. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, thanks everybody and uh, thank you, Steve. You're welcome. It's a pleasure.